Right, good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Sunday edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report, edition 58. Thanks for clicking on to today's video. A lot of things to cover in today's video with regards to the tropics. Looking at the global sea surface temperature profile at the moment, of course, the flash flood events, um, not only in Madrid last weekend, but also in recent days across Greece, where we've seen catastrophic flooding in recent times, thanks to and courtesy of Storm Daniel, that system then kind of rewound itself up and then moved on shore on the Libyan coast and brought some record breaking rainfall here. Also, of course, we've had I believe today would be day 7 of 30 Celsius or higher consecutive days above the 30 Celsius mark. Smashes the previous record of three days set back in the early 1900s. So a lot of things to cover, a lot of stuff um, you know, to consider as well. Thanks for clicking on and I greatly appreciate any new subscription. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to the channel because there is a lot of things happening at the moment around the world as well as locally. And of course, we will continue to talk more and more about the second half, middle and second half of autumn, what type of pattern we can expect. Will those uh, very warm waters deliver heavy rainfall during the second half of autumn? Also, we will look more and more at the winter situation coming up as well. So plenty of reason to stick around here on marfolkandweather.com. So I greatly appreciate each and everybody's support. So these are the Met Office predicted temperatures for 14Z today. And you can see here the cooling taking place across the northwest. But we do have a very distinct line uh, between the northwest highlands and the central highlands in terms of that boundary. We'll look at that in a second here. But the predicted temperatures in the southeast of the UK, 30 or 31 Celsius. And you can see here only 12, 13 Celsius. These are the temperatures later in the day tomorrow. You can see here the temperatures drop back into the single figures here as the frontal system moves south here. So uh, this is the current temperatures. And notice here we've only got 12.2 at Altnahara, 12.7 uh, at Loch Lascarnock. Uh, we have 14 Celsius at Tain, 17 at Dalcross. And then we've got 21 Celsius at Aviemore. So that between the 21 Celsius and the 13 Celsius, that is not a particularly big difference in terms of distance. You're probably only talking, what, maybe about uh, 50 or 60 miles of a difference. And you've got a rather distinct temperature contrast. Now, we are knocking the door of 30 in a few space, uh, places to the east of the London Luton area. So basically, uh, Suffolk into the north, uh, southern portion of Norfolk. We've got temperatures in and around the 30 Celsius mark, and we should continue to see that as we press through the day. And we've got low 20s up across southern Scotland here, also across Northern Ireland. And, uh, you know, Castle Derg reached the highest temperature ever recorded in Northern Ireland for the month of September of 28.0 Celsius. And locally, we had the warmest September day all the way up to uh, Wick and Caithness uh, a few days ago as well. And of course, I have to emphasize the point that it is within recorded history. So um, I'm not saying for a second that this is the hottest we've ever seen during the month of September, but I'm not going to go down that road today, folks. I've talked about climate change because let's face it, um, you know, it just gets more and more um you know exhausting listening to it day in and day out this is uh, no getting away from how warm it has been of course across the continent this month so far the only areas really below average is across parts of greece and that is a direct consequence the storm daniel of course and uh you know central and southern portions of iberia is below average the core of the heat this month so far is across central france and then up into the uk we've got parts of uh, areas just below uh, Liverpool, it looks like, and right bang slap over the Oxford area, we've got some very warm compared to average temperatures here. But across the UK and Ireland, we're cooking at the moment, and it looks as if it's going to be a firmly above average September overall. So, uh, so yeah, looking at the GFS Ensemble 850s here, and you can see what it's looking like. So we go from incredibly warm conditions down slightly below average 
over the next day, three or four days. And then it, it looks as if the current run of the ensemble mean has the 850 temperatures uh, generally are kind of around maybe a bit between 7 and 8 Celsius at 5,000 feet over the greater London area. Looking at the Inverness area on the opposite side of the UK, you can see here 850 temperatures very close to average in the means anyway. So you can see here it goes firmly below average over the next few days, slightly above, then slightly below. So you get the overall idea. We've got low pressure becoming a little bit more involved in the pattern. Of course, we have to look at the tropics. As I said in yesterday's video, be sure to check out the video from yesterday talking about how the tropics may have a significant role in the second half of this, this uh, month of September. If we look at the NAO, you can see here that it is going below the neutral line. So we go into a negative NAO pattern into the second half of the month. And uh, of course, that would promote trophy conditions across the UK and Ireland here overall. Let's have a look at the, um, let's actually have a look at the, sorry, the rainfall chart here of weather online, because uh, you can see here the precipitation band across the north of the UK at the moment here. So this is that distinct line underneath that uh, rain, uh, steady rain at that. Uh, really from Loch Lusgarnock northwards, it is cool and it is damp. Now, here in Everton, roughly 16 miles north of Inverness, uh, we have got a little bit of rain in, in the picture here, but big thunderstorms across Cumbria, as you can see here, across parts of Wales into the West Midlands, southern England as well. We've got some significant heavy rainfall, thunderstorm activity, and of course, we've got a lot of heat across the southeast corner of the British Isles as well. Uh, to speak about here. So let's have a look and see what we're talking about globally. The United States here for the month of September so far is looking like this. Below average across the western US, very warm compared to average across Texas, the Plain States. Then we've got the uh, mid-Mississippi Valley, Tennessee Valley into the southeast, average to slightly below average, warmer than average across the northeastern United States. And uh, looking at uh, Australia, and you can see here that it's uh, generally 50-50 in terms of temperature. We've got below average across southern and central portions of Australia here, warmer than average across parts of the Northern Territories. Much of Queensland above average into parts of uh, the southeast as well. But notice here right along the coast with the uh, cities between Melbourne and Sydney, up, uh, I was going to say up towards Brisbane, but Brisbane's actually in the warmer than average. But you can see here cool and average across that south east coast. Um, so that is Australia looking at Asia and you can see here that we've got some areas of warm compared to cold Um, so western portion of Russia very warm at the moment we've got the Kazakhstan very cool compared to average here Mongolia very warm compared to average eastern portions of Siberia is pretty cold compared to average northern and western China much of China in fact above average Southeastern China below average, and that is because of the typhoons coming through. We'll look at that in a second as well. Some terrific rainfall amounts out of Hong Kong and uh, um, Sichuan and Guangzhou in recent times here. Much of India above average. Uh, southern portions, southwestern portions of uh, China, you can see here below average. And looking at the global picture here, and you can see here that it's uh, very warm compared to average across northern South America, whereas South America is south, so Argentina, parts of Chile, Bolivia, is below average to start the month of September. So this is the global picture. Look at Antarctica. Parts of eastern, if you want to call it eastern, parts of Antarctica is firmly warmer than average versus the west colder than average overall here. So talking about flash floods, this was a scene in Brazil. A guy driving across this bridge with floodwaters going across the bridge deck. To me, to me that's a suicide mission. Just unbelievable stuff. And this was a major situation across many parts of Brazil um, of unbelievable scenes. So that's an example of the heavy flooding in parts of Brazil. If we look at parts of eastern and southeastern China, uh, we have got terrific 
um, flood situation here. So this is a scene in, it looks like coming out of a car park uh, in Shenzhen, I think that's how you pronounce it. We had record rainfall of 246.8 millimeters in three hours, breaking the city's three hour rainfall record here. Um, and this was the scene again in the same kind of region of um, just catastrophic flooding across parts of China in recent times. And of course, we have got the situation in Greece. This was the scene before, this was the scene after in the parts of Greece. Now, of course, we have increased the amount of rainfall uh, events likely due to the significant amounts of uh, warm water around the world at the moment here. Warmer than average sea surface temperatures here um, is probably increasing the amount of water vapor within the atmosphere, of course. Look at parts of Japan. We've got some terrific warmth here up across the northern portions of the Pacific. Of course, we've also got very warm waters over the North Atlantic. We need to pay attention to this very warm water as we progress towards the middle and second half of this autumn season. Lower pressure, cooler air becomes involved. We may, um, the atmosphere may draw on some of this fuel surrounding the UK and Ireland and increase in the rate of rainfall. Now that El Nino, by the way, has been slown in progress, I think. And I don't think it's anywhere near as strong as what it was predicted to be as we push through the rest of this autumn. We're just not seeing the significant increase in warmth around the eastern portion of the Pacific. But that is likely helping drive the tremendous flood event in parts of Brazil and parts of South America in recent times. Of course, a very warm Mediterranean basin is has been helping drive the rainfall across parts of Greece and even Iberia in recent times, of course, we had the record rainfall in, in the, the Madrid area just a few days ago, of course, um, or should I say really last weekend. So if we have a look through here, it looks as if London, by the way, has seen um, uh, some of the hottest weather on record for September. So it looks as if uh, 32.7 was achieved. This is a tweet by London and Southeast Weather. The Stone Dreamer always provides some very useful information here this was the scene in libya by the way because the storm daniel drifting south very cool temperatures here at my weather station 13.8 approaching midday compared to the 21 yesterday at the same time and also 24 the day before on its way to 20 uh, 28 celsius sunblick in um at 3111 meters above sea level we had a record 13 Celsius, of course, testament to the strong high pressure centered overhead. Of course, I've already explained the dynamics in place, the depth of the troposphere, about as, as high as you get, therefore the significant sinking. We've also had Cambridge Niab reached 32.8 Celsius on Saturday, yesterday, making it the hottest day of the year so far. Hottest September day in this region since 1949. So uh, we also had uh, a 19.1 uh, low on Friday night, the highest on record in September, the record dating back to 1964 here. Interesting um, tweet here by Patrick Moore, the co-founder of, uh, of Greenpeace, showing that the sea surface temperatures uh, at the moment here are cooler than they were plenty of times in the past. Of course, that's a very debatable argument. I tend to sway towards that idea that we've seen warmer in the past, but not, you know, in our lifetime, so to speak, here. So uh, some pretty remarkable stuff, actually. It looks as if we've also seen the UK's longest lasting snow patch melt away for the 10th time in 300 years, according to, uh, that was a tweet by Ullapool Weather here. So, uh, so yeah, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. That, water, increased water vapour, and this is this is what I'm talking about here. We've got warmer than average sea surface temperatures globally at the moment, and I think that's increasing the amount of water released into the atmosphere, increasing the chances of flood events and whatnot. Uh, one could argue that the Tonga Hunga volcanic eruption in January 2022 released, of course, the tremendous volume of water into the atmosphere, and that is having an impact on our weather. Also, the amount of high latitude blocking during the course of the summer 
may or may not have had influence as well. So there's a lot of things to consider. I've run out of time. Be sure to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you again tomorrow with plenty more. Bye for now.